Hi there, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out of the UK and welcome to my channel. Today I just decided to do kind of a roundup of what's been happening over the week and um, what's kind of caught my attention. So I hope it isn't long, but you know me, sometimes I go on a little rant. So if it's the first time you're passing through, please um, either click on the thumbs up, thumbs down, you can share, you can subscribe, you can mingle with my subscribers new subscribers um, thank you for subscribing and my existing subscribers thank you for hanging in and yeah I thought I would talk about a roundup of what's been happening kind of um, I guess I won't say it's globally it's mostly the UK and maybe a little bit of America thrown in okay so the first thing is um, the antibody test already so now um, the health visitors or the health workers can be tested. All people who work for the NHS who have been self-isolating or unsure about the symptoms and the NHS is going under without them. So they're going to get priority for the testing. And this isn't the antigen test, remember. This is the antibody test. And um, this is just to determine whether or not they're fit to go back to work whether or not they've had the virus out and recovered from it and are therefore safe. Um, there's also people who, especially business people, under the, what was it called? The government-backed loans. The government is talking about they're giving loans to businesses, but interest-free loans to businesses. But number one, these loans are interest-free for only three months. And then some of them, they're going up between 6 and 12% on average. I think it's about 7% nearly um, going up to 12%. So if you're taking a, a one of these loans, be aware of the implication. Three months is going to go extremely fast. And three months isn't enough time for you to get yourself together to then be imposed with interest rates that are so high. Um, personal assets yes if you take these loans and you can't afford to pay them back something happens all your personal assets will be seized I don't know how many of you watch if you can't pay take it away it's not a pretty picture people I mean some of them I know some of them are negligent in that it's not like it's the coronavirus that have caused them not to pay their bills it might be something else but by comparison it's nothing compared to why people are being forced um, in a position where they can't pay their bills. But that is the reality of it. If you can't pay, they'll take it away. Um, so that money was paid out of the coronavirus business interruption loan. It was launched by 40 lenders as a 300 billion, 350 billion rescue package. But are they rescuing or are they deferring the crisis? That's what we have to ask ourselves. And when you're thinking about taking out these loans, is there another way you can um, get the money? Because high interest rates at this time is not good. Um, somehow I think that if there was another way, you'd probably go that way, but you just never know. Sometimes your, your sense is dull and you can't think straight and you forget people um, who are quite reliable and um, you know especially if you're in business you might know other businesses who can help you and support you um, business insurers they're dragging their feet to pay out and they are under a lot of stress they are going to be walking out left right and center so you better make sure your business is on point because at this point they are going to make sure all the dots, there's there's a dot on top of all the I's and all the T's are crossed in this particular situation because they cannot afford to pay out all the claims. Even though that's what they're there for, but you can guarantee if you have done something wrong or something amiss, they're going to pick it up. So um, a 21-year-old 20 year female, no underlying symptoms died of coronavirus so to be honest it's got nothing to do with age it's got nothing to do with race it's got more to do with it's this it's indiscriminate 
It really is, so I don't know why. Well, I guess the elderly are being isolated to protect themselves, but they should be, um, they should have carers. They should be afforded carers um, that they don't have to apply for. I mean, the government knows all of the people who are claiming pension, so they should be allocated carers while they're being isolated. They shouldn't be left by themselves. Um, so that's my little point on that, the coronavirus challenge. I mentioned that in a video before. We've got young people trying to get as many views on YouTube. Silly, silly young people. I'm trying to get views and subscribers on YouTube, and so they're doing ridiculous things to try and contract the coronavirus. <clears throat> Obviously, not taking it seriously, you know, as young people are. They believe adults are stupid. They believe adults don't know what they're talking about. They feel adults um, are out of touch. And so these two young men have defied, um, well, it's not even a law. They've just behaved very, very stupidly. One is critically ill in hospital. The other one, I understand, got 35 years. Um, I think that's a bit extreme. But um, I think they see it as almost like treason, defying the law. But 35 years. Anyway, um, who's immune? Yes, like I said, with um, the, re the antibody testing kits, they're checking out who's immune so that health workers can return to work. Um, lack of PPE equipment. PPE equipment is personal protective equipment. Um, you know, the big heavy duty stuff that, you know, carers need to go into homes if they're looking for the vulnerable, looking after the vulnerable. The hospitals, I believe they have it, but the carers are kind of put on the back burner. I don't think they're given the same consideration, even though they're doing an even more um, risky job by looking after people who are high risk a lot of the time. And they're improvising while wearing short gloves and stuff like that, and those masks that are not very helpful. So there is an appeal to get PPE to them. Um, 25, no, two grounded Jamaicans in Jamaica are starving. Um, four days ago, um, they were grounded at Barbados Airport and they're sleeping on the floor, unable to get back. And that is why when you go on holiday, always have extra money on you. You know, some people, they go on holiday and because it's the last day, they use up all their money and think, oh, yeah, well, I'm going home now. I'm going to get my salary. I'm going to get this. Um, you know, my wife or my girlfriend will bail me out. With, well, I shouldn't mind say my wife or my girlfriend. I should say, because it could apply to male and female. My, sp my spouse can bail me out or my partner. And so, therefore, I'm going to use up my last few shekels and have a good time. And, you know, in a couple of hours, I'll be... Um, home. These two guys are starving. They haven't got a penny on them, and they are not going to be. They're not going to be given any money. But I, I thought that if you were grounded through no fault of your own, you should be given vouchers or something. So I don't understand why these two young men are not getting vouchers. There's also fifty-one Jamaicans stranded in the East Caribbean islands, unable to get home. Um, a half million I've signed up for Universal Credit, so you know that's going to tip the DWP over, over. It's not going to be able to cope. Um, not in a reasonable time. It will be able to cope eventually, but they will not be able to process all of those applications so that they get their money in five weeks. If they do, it'll be miraculous. They're going to have to bring more people on board, and I would imagine they would need more computers. And those systems are very, very sensitive and complicated. I work in an organisation where we have certain systems in place, and um, I'd imagine that the place like the DWP that is linked up with the police, it's linked up with the Home Office, and it's linked up with a lot of different departments, I would imagine that they would have a system that is not easy to set up. 
And so it's not going to be something that you can just have a couple of days. And yeah, you've got it all running. Like if you buy a laptop within maybe about four, and even then when you have your home your home PCs or your home laptop, laptop sorry, it takes about three to four hours to get it running with all the programs once you've uploaded them and got everything right and done all your passwords and, you know, activated everything. It takes a few hours. So you can imagine with these um, the, the government in a situation like this, they're not going to be able to process applications within five weeks so that these people will get money. Um, so uh, we'll have to watch our, this space on that one. Sweden, Sweden, they're still eating out. Um, they haven't got stringent lockdown. Um, I can't remember what their figure was. I should have brought it out, but I haven't. But yeah, they're allowing people, just a, a, a few people to still go to restaurants and engage. Um, 9,000 pe um, people on remand have been released um, from prison to protect staff. What a time to release 9,000 when there's no food in the shops. They're on sh um, lockdown anyway. They can't go anywhere. They can't do anything. Who are they going home to? Who are they going back to? This 9,000 obviously have family who not expecting them to come home, whose circumstances might have changed. They may have moved. Anything could have happened. These 9,000 are going to be vulnerable on the street to be picked up, re-arrested, and I don't see the point. I don't see the point. Because they're talking, but the thing is, is that this time they're not going in the normal prisons. They have designated areas and designated secure prisons that they'll be picking up people who are violating the um, lockdown regulations so obviously they've got a different facility to accommodate them otherwise if it's just throwing them back in prison if they're on the street that defeats the purpose so they must have another plan in place um megan and prince harris oops, megan and prince harry have fled canada because of the lockdown they've gone to california why california america where the coronavirus rate is so high. I mean, I think now it's probably quite warm or quite hot. It might be quite hot in California, so they may be okay. But um, we do know the coronavirus doesn't like heat. So I would have thought some of the sub-Saharan African countries would have been better for them. But I guess they there would be all kinds of visa restrictions in post. So maybe California is the best place for them because California does get very hot. So they might be safe there. Okay, so the police are walking out of prisons because they're thinking about their families. They, you know, apparently they found they a couple of um, inmates have died from the coronavirus. So therefore, they don't know who it's been spread to. And of course, they are concerned. What does that mean if they're walking out and these prisons are not being manned properly? Will they be fed? Will they be allowed out to be washed? What's going to happen inside those prisons? I cannot imagine. Um, criminals uh, and police will also be afraid to touch criminals. You know, there's none of this holding them up and arresting them, will there? They won't be able to do that. So what do you think the next thing? Either they're going to spray to disable and then what they're going to do with them. I guess they'll wait for these people with all these, with the army who's going to be protected to take them off. Or they may even shoot them, you know, to make sure that that contagion isn't passed around. We do not know what strategy they're using. All we know is that the police will not be holding and touching people and kneeling on them and getting in close proximity to criminals. The outcome is going not going to be very nice, I'd imagine. These are just my thoughts. Remember my thoughts on what's been happening during the week. <clears throat> um, what else is there? Um, NHS stuff. You know, we've had all of these people clapping at eight o'clock last night. 
and they're praising the NHS staff and their flight and centre. Would you believe the mothers? And the thing is, you need your um, pass to um, get from A to B on the lockdown um, and to go into shops. Apparently, mothers are ripping off the masks, ripping off the, um, what do you call them, lanyards, the passes, and stealing them mugging people to get their passes. So it's not a good time for the NHS staff. People say, oh, you know, um, they're going to be considerate, they're doing a good job, but you have to be very, very careful. Apparently, you know, when you go to, um, especially me, you know, I have so many images, you know, the picture on my past doesn't look anything like I am now. But, you know, I can still go in and I can still come out as long as I've got my pass. So it's not like they interrogate that pass and look at it really, really seriously to say, OK, that person. I mean, maybe if um, somebody who's really dark nicked the pass or a white person couldn't nick a pass for a black person unless they were in cahoots with a black person um, and they had a little network going on. And so therefore they could pass it around. Who knows? I'd like to think that um, the, what you call it, the shopkeepers are quite vigilant and really look at the passes to make sure that the image on the pass is the same as the person who's walking through the gates. I mean, to be honest, there are certain things that are consistent, like the distance of eyes apart and eyebrows. So they should know, really, even though I wear different hairstyles and different wigs, they should know that that person is me. You know, they're saying main features that don't change. Um, MOT, that's been delayed for six months. That would be a reprieve for a lot of people. Uh, but we won't, we're not supposed to be driving our cars very soon, so you won't be able to drive anywhere anyway. There'll be a lockdown on cars and driving. Um, what else? Self-employed will experience hardship if they've been dishonest on their tax forms and they've been underplaying how much they how much they've earned um, to get a reprieve on tax. Now is not the time. Well, now is now turned around to bite them on the bum because now they're only going to get out as much as they put in. Um, Hong Kong. They can now apply on the youth mobility scheme under the new uh, immigration rules. I think it's tier two. Um, and then tonight, www.loversrockradio.com. I'll be having my reggae show. Um, it's the last Friday of the month. And so, yeah, I'll see if I can get all my equipment together and try to entertain you, entertain you in a lighter way. And that's all for now. Bye bye.